Hi, this is John Persinos, Editorial Director of Investing Daily, with a video presentation for Friday, July 2nd. To view our full range of publications, visit our website at investingdaily.com. Also consider the website of our subsidiary, streetauthority.com. Well, as the July 4 holiday looms on the calendar, stocks this week continue to hover at record highs. Are stocks currently overvalued and on the verge of a correction? Are stocks a bubble in search of a pin? There are many yardsticks to help you make that determination. Key valuation metrics include the price to book ratio, which indicates what investors are willing to pay for each dollar of a company's assets, price to sales ratio, which indicates the value placed on each dollar of a company's sales, and enterprise value to EBITDA, calculated by dividing a company's enterprise value by its earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. The latter allows investors to compare the value of a company, debt included, to the company's cash earnings less non-cash expenses. Then there's the cyclically adjusted price to earnings ratio known by the acronym CAPE. The widely respected Professor Robert Schiller of Yale University invented the CAPE ratio, also known as the Schiller PE, to provide a deeper context for market valuation that takes inflation into account. The CAPE ratio is defined as price divided by the average of 10 years of earnings, the moving average, adjusted for inflation. Take a look at the following long-term CAPE chart with data as of market close July 1. According to the CAPE ratio right now, stocks in the S&P 500 are partying like it's 1929 or 1987 or 2000. That's ominous. But to shed the clearest light on the quandary of valuation, let's consult a time-proven tool favored by the Oracle of Omaha himself, Warren Buffett. Buffett, by latest estimate, is worth $100.4 billion. That figure is not a typo, so he must know a thing or two. The tool is called the Buffett Indicator. This indicator, devised by Warren Buffett, is the market cap to gross domestic product GDP ratio. It's a measure of the total value of all publicly traded stock in a country divided by the country's GDP. In a Fortune magazine interview in 2001, Buffett described his indicator as, quote, the best single measure of where valuations stand at any given moment. Think of the Buffett indicator as a broad way to assess whether a country's stock market is overvalued or undervalued. Brace yourself for a possible wave of selling because the indicator for the U.S. currently hovers at a record high. Take a look at this chart. The ratio of market capitalizations, as measured here by the broad Wilshire 5000 index to U.S. GDP, is substantially higher now than it was shortly before the dot-com bubble burst in 2000. So how should you invest now? Let's turn again to Warren Buffett. I generally follow the value investing school of thought, and Buffett takes value investing to a deep level. As he puts it, in the short term, the market is a popularity contest. In the long term, it is a weighing machine. As investors grow wary of overvalued large cap stocks, we're in the midst of a rotation from growth to value. The iShares S&P 500 value ETF, the IVE, has generated a year-to-date daily total return that exceeds that of the iShares S&P 500 growth ETF, IVW. Take a look at the third chart. As of market close July 1. The market appears to be frothy right now, but you should welcome a temporary pullback. Buffett also said widespread fear is your friend as an investor because it serves up bargain purchases. Never panic during a sell-off. Not only will the market eventually bounce back, but it will do so a lot sooner than you think. Warren Buffett doesn't necessarily wait for the market to eventually reward the merits of underappreciated stocks. He chooses stocks according to their potential as companies. He looks for strong balance sheets, good products that people need, market domination, and high-quality management. He emphasizes long-term ownership of a company, not just the chance for capital appreciation based on temporary market dynamics. The upshot? Stick to your long-term goals. Pursue wealth building with mental discipline one step at a time. Stocks are overvalued, but you can still find plenty of bargains. Well, that does it for now. Send your comments and feedback to mailbag at investingdaily.com. In the meantime, enjoy the 4th of July weekend. Stay safe and stay invested.